In this video, I want to go over a web browser known as the Zen web browser. And if you found this video on YouTube, I will provide a link below the video that will show you about the browser itself, how to install it on your system. And it is for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And let's take a look what it is. The Zen browser is a beautifully designed, privacy focused, and packed with a lot of features. Now, this is not the Zen browser I'm using. This is for it, but I'll bring it up in just a few moments. Here's a snapshot of the Zen browser that's on my system, or screenshot. And it is in the alpha version. The alpha version just simply means it's in the early stages of development, which means that you may find some bugs here and there. So it may not be your primary browser, just because you might find something in it that might cause you problems but you might want to start using it so when it's in the stable development that you'll be familiar with all the features it has so let me kind of read this description here it says the Zen browser is built uh, on top of Firefox ensuring it always stays up to date with the latest features security patches and performance improvements the Zen browser is still in the alpha stage which means it's still under development Alpha testing is a type of testing performed to identify bugs before releasing the product to the public as a stable release. So uh, expect to find some bugs here and there. However, it's important to let the developer know if you find bugs so that they can fix the problem. You can post your issues or problems on the issues section of their GitHub website. You can click either of these two links here if you find a bug within the program. And in a few moments, I'll show you this particular bug. It's not really a bug. Uh, it says that that version is based on Firefox 131 instead of Firefox 30. And I'll actually bring that up now. Let me go to internet, click on the Zen browser. And when it opens up, one thing that it distinguishes this Zen browser from other Firefox or Firefox forks is the sidebar. When you open up tabs, you don't have horizontal tabs across the top. It actually creates tabs on this bar. And this bar normally stays displayed but I like it to hide so you can go into the settings over here and change a lot of the settings and let me quickly show you the settings I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it since this is a fork of Firefox the settings looks very very similar to Firefox now I don't make this my default like I said uh, it's because still in the alpha stage I do spend some time with it so that way I see the differences and it's recently been up Dated. Yesterday was the last time it got an update, so they do update it quite often. So you can go in here and change the way that your tabs work. You can go and change the colors, manage the colors. You can change the fonts. You can change the zoom feature. So if you have problems seeing the small fonts, you could zoom in larger. Uh, you could choose your language or set to a different language. Your applications, like to save a file, you can check here to say always save to. If not, you can browse to a folder that you want to save your downloads to. Uh, you can choose what applications uh, that it handles your files to open certain applications like uh, for portable document files you can choose what application uh, you can choose how to show your updates and here's an update you can show you sh what's show history of it or you can click the what's new here and within the what's new it tells you uh, some fixes that it improved and some additional features they added and then you can go down and look at some of the past views or past release notes. Now here's what I wanted to show you. Here's the original tab that I had which is my settings. On the here is this the sidebar. Now as you can see uh, or the other tab instead of clicking the tabs across the top and instead of having a little X in the corner if you want to shut one you right click on it and choose to close the tab. Or you can say close multiple tabs which will close all the tabs on the left but in this case I just want to close this tab. So and it takes you back to the previous tab. So you can scroll down here are some uh, features that you might want to read some more about about the DRM content. You may have some issues with viewing certain types of videos online. Uh, performance it says I re use recommended performance. You can go and change some of your browsing and some of your network settings. You can change the way it looks and feels. You can change the access colors around. You can choose automatic which chooses your default theme or if you like a light theme you can choose a light theme or you can manually set it to a dark theme. You can go into a night theme, a default dark theme. You can go down here on board additional themes. You can say hide the tab bar. You can say hide the uh, top bar. You can say hide both of them. So the top bar is this bar here, which has all your buttons. I like to have these available because I like clicking the home button, taking it back to the home screen. Uh, you can say show your web panels. You can choose the split view, how the split view works. And you can choose the way that the sidebar is laid out. I'm not going to go over and read everything because as like I said this is very similar to the 
uh, Firefox. Now here's some of the shortcuts and some of the things that you can change the shortcuts and I'm not going to go through all of those. Now here's something that's different. You can actually go and uh, view the mods. You can install the mods from the Zen Mod Store and uh, this is in the early stages so they'll be adding additional mods to here and actually you can go and choose. Uh, there's 36 mods that's in it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I'm not going to go and emphasize all of those. Here you have the home. You can control what you see on your home page. Like I said, set the Firefox home. As you can see, this is a fork of Firefox, so they still let the Firefox here instead of putting Zen here. Uh, you can choose what you want to display. You can choose shortcuts. You can manage, like I chose one row. And if you want the weather icon, you can choose the weather icon to show on your home in the upper left. So you can choose what you see on your home screen. You can choose what search engine. and I don't remember if it came with Google, but I changed it to DuckDuckGo. You can choose what your bookmark suggests, uh, and you can go down and choose other search engines here. You can add things very similar to the way that you can with a Firefox. With your privacy, it's like Firefox. It chooses the standard. You can go more strict, which might break some websites, or you can choose customs. Now, you can say, tell websites not to share your data, and you can even say, do not track, if you want to select that by choosing here. Uh, it says cookies. It says delete the cookies site data. Now I don't do that because when I go to a site, if I go back to a site, it keeps the settings. If you like to save space and for privacy reasons, you might want to check that. I don't want to check passwords. I use a password manager. I'm not logged in right at the moment, but I don't ask to save passwords. Uh, here it says use a primary password. I don't since I have a master password that I get in my password manager. And here you can change the way that you display your history and your browsing modes, your location. And here it says block dangerous websites and deceptive contents, block dangerous downloads, warn you about unwanted or uncommon uh, software. So that's a security feature. Uh, and as you can see down here, there's a lot of security features that is turned on. And, and about do not send telemetry is is not checked or it is checked so it's not sending telemetry back to Zen or even Firefox so it's important if you come across a problem within the Zen browser that you go and report an issue on their website and here's the issue like uh, you can report an issue so that way that they get it because if you just make a video and say I hope that they fix that if they don't know about it they're not going to be able to fix it so here's what let me go show you here if I go up in the upper corner and I, uh, and I choose help, or I didn't mean more tools, I meant help. And when you click help, choose a bounce in, it shows that the current version is 1.0.1 alpha.10. And it says it uses Firefox 130.0. Actually, that should say, it should say 130. whatever x here. So, and someone proved in here that it is uh, 131 instead of 130. And actually, they show that on their github website you know when you go into the settings it shows that that version is actually using the firefox version 131.03 at the time of someone took that screenshot if you go back to their desktop here and you scroll down it shows that its base zen is built on firefox 131.0.3 so that where they showed on a bug it's not really a bug it's just when you go to about it's not reporting the correct uh, version of Firefox which is not really a major problem so the Zen browser like I said it takes use or makes use of the sidebar there's lots of things that you can do with the sidebar and I, I don't really use this feature where you can bring up like YouTube Wikipedia or other things that you can add to or remove from the sidebar here so I really don't use this feature you may and it's very similar to Vivaldi and for the Windows and Mac users you've probably used the Arc browser that's a chromium based browser that is very similar to this which is an open source Firefox version of the Arc browser so I'm not going to get into a lot of the features like I said the browser itself is like a Firefox version uh, it just uses more of a sidebar than the actual tabs across the top so if you're looking for a different browser something that's different something that's still safe something that's open source hopefully you'll give the Zen browser a try I hope this has been helpful to someone and have a great day